fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hail, Silver. Hooray! Frank Shelby had settled in the town of Minerville, north of Santa Fe. By crooked dealings, he managed to gain complete control of a small mining company. Gradually, he gained influence in the town, and after surrounding himself with a number of tough gunmen, became mayor of Minerville, which he ran with an iron hand. Even the sheriff was forced to do his bidding. Well, Sheriff, what brings you to my office? Frank, I came in to talk about that tax you levied on the businessmen of Minerville. What about it? It's not going to be easy to collect that tax. You don't have to do the collecting. My men will do that. I've had several complaints. Don't bother me with your complaints. If you don't like your job, I'll see to it someone gets it who's willing to take orders. I run this town. Remember that. Yeah, I know. Now get back to your office and attend to business. I'm busy. Many miles east of Minerville, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, rode leisurely along the Pony Express Trail. The Pony Express is a new means of communication between the east and the west, Tonto. The riders are still having plenty of trouble. Uh -huh. I understand some of the riders have been killed by hostile Indians. If others who follow have advance warning of where trouble might be waiting, it will save lives. And at the same time, keep the overland mail routes open. How far we ride east? We'll patrol this entire section of the trail for a few days and see what happens. The Pony Express, plenty good for West. Yes, it is. Especially since trouble is brewing between this country and Mexico. It's vital that the people know what's going on in Washington. The military dispatches get through quickly. Uh, riders get through plenty fast. That's right. The Pony Exchange stations at various points along the trail gives each rider a fresh mount so that he's able to keep moving at top speed. Someday, Toto, the telegraph will move out into this territory, and the pony riders are paving the way. Monsilver, the mock scout! The following week, news arrived almost simultaneously from the east and the far west by Pony Express riders. News of war with Mexico, and further news that Commodore John Drake Sloat raised the flag of the United States over Monterey, proclaiming California a part of the United States. Frank Shelby heard the news when he returned to his office after a short trip out of town. 
He called his men together for a conference. Oh, men, the news of the war with Mexico and of the hostilities in California means a great deal to us. How do you figure that, Brank? Well, listen. This is unorganized territory. I am the only government there is around here. I'm going to post a notice saying President Polk in Washington has proclaimed that all gold claims revert to the government. And all property and livestock owned by Mexicans in this territory is to be confiscated. Of course, we're the government here, so we take over. But if the government in Washington gets wind of what's going on... The government in Washington is too busy with the war to bother about what goes on here, Duke. Sandy, you'll get the print shop to set up some large posters. I'll give you the copy to be printed on them. Right. Before long, we'll all be well off. And I'll really be running things in this territory. From that time on, a reign of terror spread throughout the territory near Minerville. There was one man, Miles Taylor, who realized the truth and was determined to do something about it. One night, he paced the floor in his small ranch house as he talked to his wife, Martha. We can't stand by and let him take over, Martha. You're the only person here who knows I'm a member of the United States Secret Service that I came here and leased this ranch for the purpose of investigating conditions. After I heard rumors of what was going on here... You should have sent in a report before this, Miles. Now it's too late. I'm going to call a secret meeting of some of the townsmen and ranchers. I'll have them come here. If necessary, I'll show them my badge and credentials I have there in the desk. Then I'll organize them against Shelby. The following afternoon, Bragg Shelby sat at his desk talking to a new member of his gang whom Sandy had brought to him. Sandy says you're mighty handy with a gun, Pete. I do all right, Mr. Shelby. Well, Pete worked with me in Texas. We were in a gang together. You can count on him, Bragg. And he's fast in the draw. Good, good. As long as you recommend him, Sandy, I'll let him work with us. Well, Duke, what's up? I just found out something, Bragg. You know that rancher who came here a couple of months ago, Miles Taylor? Mm, what about him? I hear he's calling a meeting at his place. The ranch hand from one of the nearby spreads told me about it. He's having the meeting tomorrow night. Yeah, that's interesting. Hold on, did you say Miles Taylor? Yeah, why? Is he a tall, dark-haired fella, about 30? That's right. Why do you ask, Pete? Do you know him? I know something about him. A crooked engine agent near Santa Fe was arrested six months ago. I had some dealings with him for a while. The man who got the evidence against him was a Secret Service man named Miles Taylor. Right, and the right. agent described him to me. So that sneaking polecat posing as a rancher is a government man, huh? We better grab him right away, Bragg. If he has that meeting and tells everybody about it, he might get them to band together and move against no, him. No, no, wait, Sandy. He knows I've been having men patrol the trails and making people identify themselves. So he wouldn't be fool enough to carry his credentials with him. Well... I saw him and his wife drive into town a short time ago. You and Pete go out to their place right now and search it. Look for a badge and papers that identify him as a secret service man. All right. But what about the meat? We'll let them meet. Then we'll move in on them. Now get going. And do a neat job so they'll not know anyone's been there. The next night, about 30 grim-faced men met at Taylor's ranch house. They stood silently in the living room while Miles spoke. Men, you all know what's going on around here. Bragg Shelby has taken over lock, stock, and barrel. Unfortunately, he was more or less legally elected mayor of Minerville. But since word came that the country's at war, he set himself up as ruler of this territory. You men are being intimidated and robbed by Shelby and his cutthroats. But he is mayor and represents the law here. Yeah. What about this? Well, I checked and found out he was elected for two years. His term expired a week ago. But nothing was said about holding another election. Bragg Shelby is no longer legally mayor of Minerville. Hey, I say it's about time we got together and turned him out, along with his gunman. Sure. One of those proclamations did come from Washington. I'm but... sure they didn't. This is an emergency. Perhaps you'll have confidence in me if I tell you I'm with the Secret Service. Don't move any of you. My men are covering you through the windows. Come in, Sheriff. Well, Miles Taylor. We could hear what you were saying. Very interesting. Interesting and true, Shelby. Perhaps you can prove you're a government man. Yes, the proof is in my desk. Well, get it. Remember, you're covered. Well, Taylor, we're waiting. I didn't... This desk has been forced open. My, 
My badge and credentials are gone. You see, man, he was lying. Miles Taylor was trying to get you to revolt against the local established government so that he could eventually take over. Don't listen to Shelby, men. I, for one, believe Taylor. Anyhow, we've had enough of Shelby and his gang. I'm going to... Oh! <laughs> <Shame. laughs> you see, my men don't like to hear anyone talk like that about me. Sheriff, arrest Miles Taylor for inciting a revolt. I charge him with treason. The rest of you go to your homes. And if any of you start trouble, you'll have no homes to go to. Now get out of here. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Your chances seem brighter just knowing champions are made, not born. It happens. Take Harvey Keen, top-notch shortstop for the Detroit Tigers. When Harvey was just a lad of six, he was learning baseball tricks. He trapped those grounders, learned to throw. And this is something you should know. A Wheaties breakfast helped him grow. Now Harvey sparks that Tiger team, cause Wheaties keep him on the beam. Harvey Keen, a Wheaties guy since he was six years old. He knows there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Watch Harvey chase this hot one. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Now to continue. Late that night, the sheriff went to Miles Taylor's cell. He sympathized with Miles and expressed the wish that there was something he might do to help. Miles decided to write a letter to his superiors at Kansas City, asking them to order troops sent from Santa Fe, and the sheriff promised to see that it was mailed. The following day, Duke, who had gone to a small town 30 miles east of Minerville, hurriedly entered Bragg Shelby's office. Hi, Bragg. Wait till you hear what I found out. Well? Late yesterday afternoon, I was at the Pony Express station at Waytown. When the eastbound pony rider came in, gave the mail clerk a letter from his pocket to put into the Kansas City pouch. Said someone gave it to him at the outskirts of Minerville. Well, what about it? It was addressed to the Secret Service headquarters. Listen, you take Pete with you tomorrow. Yeah. Ride east about 40 miles to the place where the Pony Express trail branches off. The branch trail goes through Santa Fe. The main trail comes through here. Yeah, I know. What are we to do? Pony riders come west twice a week. One comes through tomorrow, but that's too soon for anything to be sent this way in answer to that letter. You and Pete get the mail pouches from any riders after that who might be heading either for here or for Santa Fe. I don't care how you do it, but get them and read every dispatch. You'll know when you've found what I want. A week later, Duke and Pete camped in a thick grove some distance east of where the trail divided. So far, we got two pouches. But there wasn't anything in them about Minerville or Bragg Shelby. Hey, I hear hoofbeats coming from the east. Must be another pony rider. Let's mount. Hmm? Right. Easy, boy. Steady, fellow. Yeah, look. I see him coming around the bend down the trail. Have your gun handy and let's go. Get up there. Uh, you nailed him. He fell off his horse. The two crooks hurriedly rode to the side of the fallen rider and dismounted. Oh, oh, oh. Got him in the shoulder. Here's the mail pouch. I'll open it. Right. I'll rip all the envelopes open with your knife, Pete. Then I'll examine each letter. All right. Working quickly, Duke began checking the contents of the envelopes. Before he had a chance to complete his task, they heard hoofbeats. Hey, look. A masked man and Indian coming around the bend. Let's get away from here. There may be others with him. Yeah, he's steady, boy. <laughs> oh, I dropped the open pouch. Can't stop now, though. Get out of here! Pete and Duke rode quickly into the woods and out of sight over a ridge as the Lone Ranger and Toto rounded the bend and stopped beside the pony rider. Oh, 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 He's wounded and unconscious, Toto. Ah, mail pouch open. Letters spilled in trail. The men who shot him were after something. 
Bandage his wound while I check through the dispatches. Ah, me do it. While Tuttle gave first aid to the rider, the Lone Ranger picked up the dispatches. All of them had been ripped open, but the last four or five hadn't been read. The Lone Ranger examined them. Mm -hmm. Here's one addressed to the Commandant at Santa Fe. This must have been what those men were after. Now read it. This is from the Secret Service headquarters in Kansas City. Listen, Toto. Commandant Army Post, Santa Fe. Move cavalry to Minerville Territory at once. Arrest Bragg Shelby and followers for treason. Haste necessary to save life of Miles Taylor, Secret Service agent. Signed, S.F. Jones, agent in charge, Kansas City office. Mm, that plenty important. Yes. How do you stay and take care of this man? Get him to the nearest town, then head for Minerville. Ah, uh, and what do you do? I'll take the Pony Rider's place and carry this pouch and the dispatch to Santa Fe. Mm, that plenty risky. Trail to Santa Fe, go through Indian country. Maybe spies an enemy in hills, try get mail pouch. The Pony Riders take the risk, so shall I. Easy, steady, big fella. See you in Minerville. Adios. Adios. Monsilve! It was more than a hundred miles to Santa Fe, and as darkness fell, the Lone Ranger realized there were more risks than those Tonto had mentioned. After he reached the branch trail and headed southwestward, the masked man found the going rougher than on the main route. But the great white stallion Silver, used to long, hard travel, moved at a steady but fast pace through the darkness over the rutted trail. A sudden thunderstorm added to the danger. And the rain soon turned the dirt into slippery mud. Easy, Silver. Steady, boy. Though impatient to reach his goal, the Lone Ranger stopped for short periods to rest his horse, then moved on at the same steady pace. It was just after dawn when... Indians coming across the plains. Faster, big fella. We must outrun them. Faster. Montilla! In spite of the weary miles he had already run, the gallant Silver seemed to find strength and added speed in his master's voice and managed to outrun and lose the hostile Indians. Then he once more moved at the same steady pace as before. With intermittent rest periods, the great horse pushed onward, and the miles faded beneath his steadily pounding hooves. Foam flecked and spattered with mud, but with his head held high, Silver carried his determined but weary master toward his destination in the true tradition of the pony riders. Finally, Santa Fe loomed in the distance, the sight of which filled both horse and rider with renewed energy. Not far now, big fella. Montilla! Meanwhile, at Minerville, Miles Taylor's trial, a mockery of justice, was being brought to a close after several days of unusual court procedure. Bragg Shelby presumed to sit on the judge's bench. The improvised courtroom was packed with grim-faced townspeople as the jury, composed of Shelby's men, filed in after a five-minute stay in a back room. The court will come to order. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yeah. We find Miles Taylor guilty. Stand up, Taylor. You have been found guilty of treason while the country is at war. You have anything to say before you hear the sentence? You're the guilty one, Bragg Shelby. Guilty of robbery, murder, and treason to your country. Quiet! Quiet! Watch the crowd, man. Keep your guns handy. As mayor and acting judge of this court, I sentence you, Miles Taylor, to be hanged. No! No, you can't do that! Listen, everybody! My husband told the truth. He is a government agent. If you let this happen, you'll all be guilty of murder. Well, shut that woman up. Get her out of here. No, no, by Jiminy, I won't. She's right. We'd all be guilty if we let you get away with this. If you townsmen have any nerve, you'll help me put an end to all this here and now. My men are covering all of you. As for you, Sheriff. Before Bragg could pull the trigger, a bullet came through the open window. Everyone turned at once and saw a masked man holding two guns. At the next window was an Indian, also holding guns. Hey, look, a masked man, an Indian, he fucked Shelby. They're two against all of us. Use your guns, men. Drop it, Shandy! No! Wait your way out, men. Don't let them take you. Wait. Look through the windows. The United States Cavalry! Look at that! All right, drop your guns, all of you. This territory is now under martial law. Captain, Captain, I'm mayor of this.
this town. That mask man and Indian interrupted court procedure. I demand they be taken into custody. Also, I charge the masked man with attempted murder. Your brag, Shelby. Yes, that's right, Captain. Point out the men who have stuck by you, Shelby. By all those in the jury box and uh, those two men who just entered. Thank you. That's all I want to know. Sergeant, have Shelby and the men he pointed out taken into custody. Yes, sir. Hey, wait, what is this? I'll tell you, Shelby. Those two men the troopers just grabbed near the door are the men whom we saw leaving after wounding a pony rider. You must have sent them. Who are you to Shut tell up. me that I... You're through. The Army will take care of you and your followers. Miles Taylor, the Secret Service agent you were about to murder, will be one of many to testify against you. All right, take them away, men. Captain, you arrived just in time. I'm glad my message got through. Oh, thank heaven for the brave pony rider. Oh, the thanks go to the masked man who took the wounded pony rider's place, ma'am. If it hadn't been for him... But, but where is he? He was here just a moment ago. He went out in a hurry. Who is he, Captain? I'm surprised that a masked man did so much for us. And I'm surprised, sir, that you, an agent of the Secret Service of the United States, doesn't recognize him as the foremost American patriot in the West. A man who has the confidence of the president himself. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording.